Biden. Josh, what episode is this? 43. 43, everybody! Episode 43 of Bill Tommy! It's only one episode 43, and you guys will always be able to say that you were here for that episode 43. People are gonna, like, one day people are going to be like, dude, I remember episode 43. Those people had no idea what they were in for that night. It was the day we almost died from that horrible earthquake, a 4.4, I can't believe this it. This is the best place to be during an earthquake. They always say, if there's an earthquake in LA, go to the belly room of the comedy store. And uh, this way... This is the most dangerous place in the LA, I think. There's been a few times oh, no where I've been in certain areas of this comedy club, and I, I think too hard about what happens if there's an earthquake right now. Oh yeah, this is the only. This is one of the only places that was here during the '30s, and really hasn't changed much. They just, if anything happens, they just put another layer of black electrical <laughs> tape over it. Like this, the comedy store is basically made of black lacquer, fucking wall, shiny wallpaper shit, and it's just it's just to catch the asbestos and the lead so that it isn't like snowing asbestos in here. This is a fucking old cancerous building, but that's the type of venue that you want to perform comedy in, right? For some reason. Right. We all have thyroid disease now, but who cares? Right. People are like, why do comedians only live to be 35 years old? It's because they're fucking hanging out in asbestos land. Yeah. Did you did you feel it this morning? Did you wake up? Absolutely. So much fun. I love earthquakes. It's the most exciting thing. Like the morning, you know, I obviously a lot of them, a lot of them have been at six or seven in the morning lately, and that I could sort of do away with. My favorite thing is when they happen during the day after I smoke some pot. Right. Because then when it happens, <laughs> I just start cracking up. Like it's the ultimate, just like. Whoa! And you see the ground sort of just fucking do that thing, and uh, yeah, yeah, I love that. I can't believe I felt it because I have like a really like cushioned bed. And that's how hard it was rocking. You know, <laughs> Tiffany felt it, but Stacy and uh, Katie didn't feel it. And right. Just... Exactly. Like, Stacy, <laughs> Tiffany, uh, wake up! There was an earthquake. Right, yeah. No, but like my dog didn't give a shit. I did, did a little uh, Twixie didn't either. It's yeah. so funny. Like as she lifted her head up and she gave this look of like, should I bark at that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> it was just she didn't re didn't really creep her out too much though. Yeah, my cat had a meltdown. Though. Really? It's like started running full speed into a wall. It did, they had no <laughs> idea what was going. On. Earthquakes are totally. They are the most awesome natural disaster of them all. There's no doubt about that. It's fun, but it also, like, afterwards, right after, you have that, like, almost like you almost got in a fight, like, adrenaline. Like, that oh, totally. I was just like, huh. Oh, there is that nothing day. that makes my heart beat like that, because you are, like, there is still 2% of you that, that knows that it could totally be the apocalypse. Right. Just 2%. And then it's gone a few seconds later. It's really great watching all the, the news reactions, too. I don't know if you saw the KTLA news that was reaction. Amazing. And if we can get uh, Kimberly Condon on stage right now to do her impersonation of the KTL. Uh, come do on, Cam. Do you have get an impression of it? Come on, Cam. Did I miss something? Did you make a vine about this? He's thing? fucking with me. He thinks I look like the guy news anchor. The, oh, he's the black guy, guy that like, because he had big eyes. No, because, because he went like this. What did, what did he do? He just. <laughs> Okay, so the earthquake. Do you have any issues with Kimberly losing? It's the same thing! <laughs> that was pretty good. You look just like that black news yeah. anchor from KC. Kimberly Conley, you're gonna see a little bit from her later. <laughs> Uh, and Joey Diaz was the best. Joey Diaz was actually podcasting at the time. If you uh, listen to his podcast, uh, Church of What's Happening Now, it's pretty funny. His reaction. I can't believe that guy wakes up at 6 in the morning. To do a podcast. Unbelievable. It does not seem like a good idea. Not at all. Yeah. Um, fuck yeah. So thank you guys so much for coming out. I'm excited to be here. Another fun episode. Uh, what else is going on? Anything else to... Talk went, about before we bring went, up our head of security. Went to Dallas, got to see the UFC, got to uh, yeah. drink at the bar that we went to in Dallas that we've talked about where so much craziness has happened. Yeah. And yep, the same thing happened to me. All four nights I was there, I went there, and all four nights I don't remember so, one thing. That place is insane. Yeah, Concrete Jungle in Jack Dallas, if you ever go to it. It's a uh, good place to black out, so bring a loved one somewhere. Heck yeah. I spent the whole weekend here doing spots. Yeah. That was it. Just a very routine. It's nice to have a routine home weekend once in a great while and got to knock that out. Found out I'm opening up for Dave Attell at the end of April. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah. Thank you. No big deal. 
no big deal. He's one of the top five comedians in the world right now. Anyway, that's okay. Anyway, um, uh, has he seen you do comedy before? <laughs> yeah. That's not what I meant. Why would you stop? It's a friend of mine. Why would I mean it? Why is everybody laughing? <laughs> Wait a second. It just hit me. Um, yeah. No, yeah, we work together on the burn, and uh, he's a, just an awesome guy. And he's good friends with Jeff Ross, so we've hung out a lot. And, you know, when we're in the same city and this and that. So I got a little family, you know. Dave's a great guy. I'm really excited to uh, work with him. I'm sure those crowds are going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, fuck yes. For those of you that watch this show, you know that we have a head of security here to keep us safe at all times. And um, it used to be a guy who dressed up like the Iron Patriot, who's a version of the Iron Man, a red, white, and blue um, Iron Man guy. And we... He quit the show. He said he got too big for the show. He got up to, he got up to I think, 2,700 Twitter followers. And he said, goodbye, guys. That's what I needed. <laughs> 2,700. I'm throwing it in. Now I'm going to use that 2,700 to launch into my new thing of obviously doing absolutely nothing. No, he just retweets <laughs> old tweets from a long time ago. Right. <laughs> Very bizarre, but uh, so weird. ever since he quit the show, to show him how replaceable he is, yeah. we've had a different version of the Patriot. Uh, we've had the Black Patriot, we had Patriotica, the Black Female Patriot, we had El Patriotico, our Mexican Patriot, we had the Sexy Patriot, we've had so many different Patriots. Iron Josh. Iron PVC. <laughs> that was a good one. Iron Josh was fun in La Jolla with the speech impediment. I just watched rewatched Kill Tony 41, and I forgot that I had uh, I ate a Iron Queef in that episode. Oh yeah, you did. That was a great one. Yeah. Um, and uh, this week's no different. You know, I really dug deep. I'm like, how can I top myself this time? What kind of head of security is someone that people can believe in? somebody would truly want to follow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I get to you. Iron Jesus Christ! <laughs> Hailing from the great land of Iron Jerusalem. Perhaps you've read his Iron Commandments. <laughs> the creator of the heavens and the earth. <laughs> The Iron Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Good that we can get you on a Monday. We, we, we. <laughs> Glad that you're available. I see that uh, the wounds on your hands have healed well since the crucifixion. <laughs> Fuck yeah. How's uh how's everything going, Iron Jesus? How's your day going today? Well, I hung out at the Ace Hotel. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> a journalist from London that works for the Independent. We talked about LA. And then I rode a dirty bus. Ah, that's how Jesus travels with the people that need to help the most. And the last two blocks I walked like a madman. Just to get here to be with you. I'd love to help you. I love to well, there was when, when there was only one set of footprints, that was you coming here uh, for this show. Now, Iron Jesus, you actually know the Iron Patriot, the original Iron Patriot. You see him around. Have you seen him since his uh, since he left us? I haven't. Now he talked about knowing me, but I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> he would say, "I know you, I know you," and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I know you," but I really didn't know him. Right. <laughs> Associating, you know, he's saying, hey. He's just name dropping Jesus everywhere around Hollywood. He was name dropping. <laughs> <laughs> he, used to, he used to come up and sing to me crazy songs. Now, Jesus, I have a question for you. A lot of people are wondering what happened to this Malaysian flight. Uh, what, what's the number? 370. 370. A lot of people are asking, where is this flight? Just I, I know there's lots of different lords and gods and all this, but I'm wondering if you have any idea what happened with it. What would be your guess? 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> For those Catholics in the room, there's your leader. That's where he stands on the whole thing. Just a straight up shoulder shrug. Same thing, uh. Same thing. Dissolved it, like nuked it. So they like, turned it into like dust over the ocean, like. Bit of Nothing a, more bit fun of space than waves. Than conspiracy Jesus over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have, we have those things now. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not, it's not, as much of a conspiracy as any other guess. What I want to know is, and I've been wondering if I, I see my thing is, I almost wanted to tweet about this. I guess I'm just going to create an open forum for a second here. Because I guess I can talk about it here. Did you notice that there were two Iranians with stolen passport? I don't mean to get political. I don't mean to get political or racist, but I'm about to get both just for a second. There were two Iranians with stolen passports. We remember this from a couple days after the thing, right? Am I the only one that saw all that news? Yeah, yeah. You guys just staring at me? No, you're right. And, you're... and then all of a sudden, a week's gone by, and they're like, there's a chance that it was hijacked. But definitely wasn't the two Iranians with stolen passports. <laughs> Is it not the craziest fucking thing you've ever seen? Does it make any sense whatsoever? I think they're covering up a lot of, a lot of shit. Because... I, I think so. Yeah. I, and I think that's an understatement, because... Because the mayonnaise or Malaysian or whatever they're called, uh, the government, the Malaysians, the Malaysians. Remember, remember when they said that that the uh, the flight, like U.S. was saying, like no, the the airplane probably flew for an extra seven hours, and then like the next day, mayonnaise said, no, it's it's it, it that's not true. But then like a day after, they say, oh yeah, that's true. It, it's like it's so weird. Yeah. First day, it, they had it. They're like two, I two. Stolen passports were on. They didn't know. Right. The second day, they found out the two guys were Iranian. Hey. <laughs> I don't want to be Mr. White American like any of those people, but seriously, guys, they're fucking Iranians. <laughs> okay. We're still I, I guess I'm being political. Uh, yeah. Even if they're not Iranians, they're the only two known thieves on the plane. We know that from the stolen passports. All right, this is a different podcast. This is a totally different podcast. I want to talk with somebody uh, with a good conspiracy theorist about this shit because I think there's one being written right in front of us. Anyway, way to make it nice and dark, Tony. Good job. I, I like how there's like a little knob though that the pilot can turn off like all the pings. I mean, like, why would you even have that knob? Like, hey, just in case if you want to turn off all pings to our radars. Here, just turn this little knob right here. <laughs> it's insane. It's just dumb. It's just. Right, why are we even talking about this? <laughs> exactly. This topic of this seven, this, this flight three seventy topic is really Boeing. <laughs> You throw me under the bus like that? <laughs> Let's get this show started. As always, I have two of my funniest friends to be guests on the show. This week is no different. It's the return of Willie Hunter and the debut on the show of Nick Rutherford, everybody. Audience for host and the improv sketch guru. Two very funny guys. Fly me to Malaysia. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. It's good to be here. Hell yeah. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. <laughs> yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Are you Irish? I'm part. Part Irish. Jesus, what nationality are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am the nationality of the world. Uh, I'm supposed to say I'm from Jerusalem. <laughs> Where are you really you, from? You are not committed to this. <laughs> Germany. I wanted to say like San Francisco. <laughs> and really, uh, any uh, answer is funny. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm a native of LA, and I'm uh, half German and Jew, half German yeah. Jew, and half uh, Scotch Irish Catholic. Just saying, Rancho wow. Cucamonga. White! <laughs> White as fuck. German Jew is one side, huh? Yes. That's an interesting one. What? Uh, my dad's mom divorced him in World War II because of 
the true stuff. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true stuff. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's, that's sort of what I was fishing for when I said true. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to guess your age or anything, but I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, you're not in your 20s. That's a real divorce right there. Oh, Jerry. That's true. That's a, that's a hardcore divorce. It was. It was. You know, that's, they, did, they never said it, but you just knew. You know, it took place in, like, 1941. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Some people go to divorce court. Your parents went to the Nuremberg trials. <laughs> Well, we have fun with comedy on this show. A bunch of comedians sign up for the chance to do a minute. Oh, yeah, uh, as always, G, uh, the Iron uh, Head of Security always asks our guests a question. Do you have a question for our guest tonight, Iron Jesus Christ? Heaven or hell? <laughs> for me? <Good> question. <laughs> oh, for me? Oh, for both of you, actually. Heaven or hell? <sighs> now, I thought about this. <laughs> and I feel like hell will be a lot of fun but I would sleep better in heaven. And I'm all about sleep, so heaven. Good answer. I'm choosing heaven. Uh, if, if, if there is a heaven and a hell, Jesus, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> My heaven would have, like, a little cool freight elevator down to hell, so I could ah! in hell and then go up and sleep with Willie in heaven. <laughs> In the same bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how we do it. We might have to do that in hell. So, heaven and hell is a bunk bed? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like a big one. Yeah, give me a hell one. I have another question. Ooh. Water or wine? Time. Oh, wine, yeah. Wine, yeah. Yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a big problem for me, actually. So, wine. All right. Can you turn this water into wine? No. But Josh. <laughs> But Josh can. Josh, two uh, lines, please. Two lines. <laughs> Joshy Christ back there. Um, fuck yeah, great questions, Jesus. I like that. I read a great quote the other day. I can't remember. It's slipping my mind who it was, but it was something about, you know, heaven seems like fun and all, but all the good company would be in hell. It's like Sinatra or something. Yeah, it's like that quote, uh, if I don't want to be a part of a club that doesn't take me, but not like that quote at all. I mean, I just want to show everybody that I also know some quotes. <laughs> Once everyone's dead, who would you rather hang out with, Hitler or Gandhi? Honestly? Yeah. <laughs> hang out with Hitler, man. <laughs> Gandhi, Gandhi's just going to put me to sleep. <laughs> Hitler's got some stories. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's a good painter. He's <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell him. Good painter. <laughs> and and I, I, like, I actually agree with a lot of the things that he said. <laughs> Happy St. <Saint> Patrick's Day. <laughs> well, you guys take that way too serious. <laughs> no, but Gandhi's a fan. <laughs> I love it. Well, you guys know what we do here. A bunch of comedians sign up for the opportunity to get one minute of stage time, and then we try to help them out with comedy in any way, shape, or form. Not like we're know-it-alls, but we just give them our feedback and maybe try to punch something up, make it bigger, help them out, talk about their lives, maybe figure out something else that we'd like to hear them talk about on stage since they're comedians. They get to do one minute of stand-up, and then they know that their minute is over when they hear the sound of a kitty. Aw, how cute. But they have to wrap it up after that, because uh, if they keep going, they're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. There you go. You don't want to hear that noise again, do you? So, uh... He's a fan of Major League Soccer. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was murdered in one, but the whole episode, he's like, yeah. I gotta go back to my corner. Forget it. There you go. So let's get it started. A chance to get it for Josh Martin. Thank you, Josh Martin. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. It's not wine, but... Uh, oh, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I like a beer. There you go, a beer, any beer. Just carry on. Like saying, I just What's the most drink. Irish beer you can get? Killarney's. <laughs> I'll take a Killarney's. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a beer. That sounded good. Yeah, yeah. What you want is a McGuffin. Uh, <laughs> McGuffin. That'd be a Scottish thing. 
And you, you actually live with Josh guess. Martin. You live your roommate. Yeah, I, Josh Martin lives uh, in our living room. And, uh... <laughs> and, uh... Have you ever kind of masturbated? Did you? Did you feel that? <laughs> Thank God I haven't. Uh, did you feel the earthquake? Yep. You got up, didn't you? I got up and went outside. I thought you did. I thought, <laughs> if I felt someone getting up, I woke up in my bed and I'm like, ah, it feels like an earthquake. <sighs> and I went back to sleep. I never felt an earthquake before, so. Oh, it was Josh's <laughs> first earthquake. And he had to go outside. He had to go right outside. <laughs> I've done that before, though. Really? Yeah, well, it was like the big jolt ones. Like, this one wasn't really a jolt, this was more like a rocky yeah. one. The jolt ones freaked me out, though, where it just feels like something just... You guys felt the earthquake, right? Yeah. In here? Everyone in there? Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody feel like they woke up before the earthquake happened, like a dog, and were like, something's wrong. And then they like, yeah. That's what happened to me. I was like, I, like, I have to protect this universe. And then I heard the, the earthquake hit, and I just laid in bed, and I was terrified. <laughs> Jesus, did you feel it? I know, caution. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? <laughs> it, it? It shook me out, of, almost out of bed. I, I hopped up and ran to the door and got outside and started crying. Oh, well, going, oh no, oh no, oh no. Is that if the gay marriage caused it? <laughs> I think that's one of those bear noises you need to make. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> well, let's get this thing started. You guys ready for this? It's episode 43 of Punch Movies. Comedians are about to be one man station. Your first comedian testing it out tonight, popping the cherry on 43, will be Mugzilla. <laughs> guys that comes to the comedy store. Always fun and different. Very positive attitude this guy has. Mugzilla, everyone. I like the uh, current trend in nice, full beards in both men and women. Yeah, I like the trend towards women going back towards a nice bush, hair pie, Beaver, and one of the best things in my case, because I I had a dream the other day. I was eating some pussy, and it was hairy. It was hairy. I couldn't see cast it, so I know what my subconscious like. And I liked it because the next day I might be at the water cooler bragging about my sex the night before, and everybody's like, "Yeah, sure." until they see the hair in my teeth. But how did they see the pussy hair in their teeth if it was a dream? No, well... Is that like... <laughs> bragging about pussy and he's going yeah sure so he just <laughs> I'm bragging about having sex the next day because I like to eat pussy so I usually if I eat a hairy snatch <laughs> I have the uh, uh, badge of honor I guess you would call it uh, just real quick Mugzilla are you single just really <laughs> I have a, a follow-up. <laughs> is that hair attached to the hat? Or is that... Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> Put that hat back on. <laughs> what is that hat, though? I like the... the Green. Oh, this oh. is Murph. Murph the Surf. Murph the Surf. To paint a picture for the audience listening in the car, uh, Mozilla looks like the killer from Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> he was letting himself go a little bit. Yeah, so. And if you're not an old fan of Twin Peaks, it's also... <laughs> I just started watching it. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> perhaps the, uh, the killer, if for the more modern uh, viewer, perhaps yeah, sure. the, the, the killer from True Detective, yes. if he really let himself go. Oh, okay, sure, sure. <laughs> Which he already let himself go. I'm saying if he let himself go even more. Uh, I would have Twin Peaks killer and the True Detective killer had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> in the, uh, in the, ne all right. Ah. Ah. Mugzilla. Mugzilla. I like, uh, um, 
I like that crass humor. I think, uh, you know, it always gets a shock reaction. The crowd was into it for a minute. Yeah, I love your timing. I love the part where you said I had a dream that I was eating some pussy. Like, yeah. then, now you're pretty much saying anything. For a second there, it seemed like you were sort of uh, hesitant to say it. And that natural timing that happened was pretty funny. I don't know if that was on purpose or... Well, first time for the joke here tonight right. for Kill Tony. Fresh humor. All right, please. Right. We need the fresh. We need the fresh. Fresh jokes over here about the show, but it's like you're a chef that just made a well, terrible entree. It doesn't taste good at all. But you're like, hey, it's fresh. No, I, I don't know if you noticed it. I mean, I, I mean, the the cap came off the garlic powder when I was making it. And it fell into everything, but it's not moldy. Well, Tony, I don't know if you noticed it. But girls are going back to bushes again. It's becoming very popular. Are you talking Tony, about the bushes that you rape girls in? Yeah. <laughs> No means no, Mugsy. Well, I'll say this. I, I've known, I, when I hosted the show a lot, Mugzilla goes up, and he's gotten so much better. Oh, he, totally. he had his whole phase where he dropped Mugzilla and went by Mike Sofer for a little bit. And he's like, I gotta, he's I like gotta a, rebuild, you know? He's like, a, he pulled a, he had different personalities. He was almost like he pulled a mankind on the open mic. Well, that was because <laughs> he's he's Foley. Foley. next he's mankind. Yeah, he's a little Jack. dude love coming up. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 This is a guy that knows how to read the <laughs> I remember one time he came out wearing the mask. Remember that? Oh, my God. <laughs> what was that about? Well, I, I was, I was, I, was I, like, I enjoyed it. I really did. It was his great mask. My uh, <laughs> yeah. I, For me, the moment I checked out <laughs> was when you said the next day when you're talking about it at the water cooler. Oh. <laughs> No sex, no water cooler. What is, okay, that's what I think. It didn't fly, huh? What, no day job with a water cooler. No day job. No, no, no. no okay, no, yeah. No. So I think maybe at the water fountain, you yeah. get something to it. <laughs> if you want it to drain through, you know. It's gotta be from the heart, I feel. Like. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what, what would you tell you? What would you talk about pussy with your friends? What's the location? <laughs> The location? Yeah. Yeah, they're not my rape fan. <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing. Now you're trying to go along with that thing we see. <laughs> um, when you asked him about the location, uh, I thought he was just going to say, oh, between the woman's legs. Like, it almost seemed like he was confused, but now that I acknowledge it too late, it doesn't make sense. Oh, um, Maxilla. Yeah, oh, yes, Jesus. Also, I am Jesus Christ. I, I have similar to him. Huh? <laughs> I ate a burning bush. Oh! oh. 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 Bush. <laughs> Mozilla, um, this was fun. It was fun chatting with you. All right. Yeah. Thanks for the fresh material. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the material. It's uh, Mike Sofra at Mozilla 007. What? Wait, what? Not your email. <laughs> Twitter that has a name before the app? <laughs> What's your cell phone? <laughs> no, 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 Thank you, Mozilla. Alright, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, there he goes. Alright. It's a guy it's almost demanding an encore to staying on stage so long. A uh, uh, question that I always like to ask my guests is, uh, do you remember a joke that you did when you first started stand-up comedy uh, that you're embarrassed about and that you can't believe you ever said on stage? Uh, I tried to make a joke about, <laughs> and my friend said, uh, I said, hey, I'm going to order a pizza. I think I'm going to get a medium. It's just only us. He's like, no, man, order large. It's more slices. I was like, what are you talking about? You can make as many slices as you want. And that was the response. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was my first joke that bombed. That's brilliant. You guys don't know. Right. And now it was terrible. Uh, I don't. I was. This is very embarrassing. That's great. Wildly influenced by Dane Cook when I started. Wow. 
So me too, but to yes. not do whatever that guy was doing. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. So when my, I saw my friends laughing at Vicious Circle in Youngstown, Ohio, then I'm like, I have to move to LA and start doing stand up because it's not gonna it needs me. Right. <laughs> I swear to God, that's a true story. I mean, I, I have more respect for Dane Cook now than I did then, but I'm just saying. Well, I don't know. Flippity flopping around the stage is exactly what I sort of hate about comedy sometimes. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear that. But so I guess the first joke I think I ever did was about how I wanted to go in a police ride along, and it was a lot of flippity flopping around the stage. Wow. Like, like a lot of sound effects. But I will say this I was proud about this. It was a lot of like, I would like, the cop would ask me to come on the, he'd be like, we gotta bust this meth lab. There's no backup. Here's a gun, come in. <laughs> And there was a lot of like hatch out with that. Yeah, nice. See that real life sound effect? <laughs> that's part of the joke. Yeah, that's part of it. You got a cop friend. Uh, and then it was like kicking down the door, like, pfft, like I did a lot of that, and like girls like running by, like, ah, like screaming out of the door. And then when the meth guy like showed up, I would like shoot at him, but I'd go, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, I can't do gun sound effects. And that was like my proudest. Wow, that was the yeah, end of that? Yeah, well, it went on. Uh oh. But it's, how long did it, it go it? on for? 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that it would truly be something to be embarrassed about. It's always a fun question because either the bit's really funny and it gets a laugh, and I'm like, I can't believe you don't still do it, or it's that bad, and it's like, well, I see why you don't do that anymore. Yeah. So either way, it always works out. So oh, I, just, I know that, oh wait, what was that? No, go ahead. I know your next comedian. This guy is a very interesting, funny, new comedian. He's, he works, uh, he's like a future brain surgeon over at USC. He's uh, getting his master's and being a doctor. It's the one and only Ori Amir. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gay, I'm, I'm just a foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys into bondage? <laughs> me too, me too, mate. Hey, hey, just because I'm from the Middle East doesn't mean I don't like to be hung upside down and have dildos shoved into my ass like everybody else in California. <laughs> right? But, but there's a time and a place, man. When I, I was at Six Flags the other day and they, was doing, they were doing bondage in front of children. So, so I went to talk to the manager and he told me, no, 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 you don't understand, so we restrain you to the roller coaster so that you don't fall off. It's for your safety, so I was like, safety, huh? Well, there are other dangers in the park, you know. Some people, they scream so loud it can cause ear damage. They should be gagged. <laughs> and put some clamps on the nipples for good measure. <laughs> <laughs> and what nationality are you exactly? Uh, Israeli. Israeli. Interesting. I've been to Germany for four months. Say that again? I've been to Germany for only four months. And half of my Hebrew accent got genocided somehow. But... <laughs> I was going to say, you come across as very German. Yeah. That is interesting. You know, no one ever talks about the Jew Nazis, you know? <laughs> like, the people that were Jewish is like, hey, man, I'm not Jewish, I'm like one of you guys. Let me join you and kill one of these Jews. But they're Jewish. It's true. Would, you, fact, would you do that? <laughs> this is not about me. <laughs> 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 I mean, you're like, hey, are you a Jew? And you're like, no, I think that's no one, one of those, like, you had to be there. Yeah. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, would you kill Jews if you were a Jew? Like, whoa. That's just, this, is, this is the easiest way to end everybody's career. It's by answering yes to that. Sorry. Right. This basically just means you want to kill Jews. This is really paper heavy, after all. It is. It's a very, uh... What does he do again? I mean, it's what do you genius. do? He's genius. Well, let's just hope that none of us get any sort of brain injuries. <laughs> You're trained to be a brain surgeon? No, no. You, I wouldn't, you wouldn't trust me cutting your brain. I'm just... I'm no, just, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, no, no, I'm just, I'm just doing research, so I'm like scanning brains. Oh, and interesting. Make up theories and stuff. Oh. You're going to make up theories? Yeah. I didn't realize that's what <laughs> being a scientist was like. <laughs> You're going to make up a theory right now. Does it work with the ladies saying you're a scientist? No. 
it's better to say you're a comedian. No, I don't think so. I, see, <laughs> I see what you're saying, though, about the uh, like the loud noises and stuff. I actually had an idea a long time ago I never did anything with about how ambulances go by trying to protect somebody, but yet you can get ear damage from them. If you, you know, they're fucking loud as fuck. And, and they're just like trying to help people out, but yet they're like pretty much destroying people's hearing. You know, the same. But I don't, there's nothing there. I never really found the, the joke there. But uh, <laughs> so, you know, while you were doing like, anything of that guy, pick me up because I got ear damage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I really liked what you were what you were talking about. The way that you got into it is a little bit interesting because a I don't I didn't really pick up on exactly why people from the Middle East would be hung upside would would it one I mean oh it's, it's like. Uh, it, it, Despite, I mean, just because I'm from the Middle East doesn't mean I don't like like everybody else in California. Like the- I would go with the fact I would I keep it honest and real, and what do I know? But this is just something that I noticed about it is that if you went to Germany for four months of your life, I would say that is the front end of that, and I picked up on bondage things there would be your way in on it, in my opinion. Because the whole Middle East thing, and then you immediately make it not real by having dildos shoved in their ass. And then when you say, and like, and like all you people, all you people in California that want dildos shoved in your ass, and I mean, it's a little aggressive. You lost 95% of everybody in the room. 95%? I'm pretty sure Huxley was the only one. <laughs> but, uh, also, I, I, I did like the first joke just because I'm from. Uh, Europe, I guess, would be Middle East didn't ring true because of your accent, yeah. but uh, maybe say a little more so then we all go, check out this faggot, and then say, <laughs> just because, you know, I don't know, just the first thing, I was like, I haven't made a judgment yet, so then all of a sudden I know that you're terrified of being gay, and it was a lot of butt stuff, so now I'm confused, how do you think? No. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Uh, you thought about it, haven't you? <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one list of two out of your options. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think the way around that is that, because uh, the Middle East thing, again, there's a different stereotype about the Middle East than there is about Europe. I think that your way in on that, since we found out that you did live in Germany for four months, is. I'm not gay, I just lived in Europe for a few months. That's right. Is uh, already a stronger and just as quick of an opener for that. As you could tell by that guy's burp in the middle of the room. <laughs> That's how you know when something's really funny. It's, yes. it's not always laughs that you need. Sometimes it's just any natural bodily reaction. <laughs> Fart, yeah. burp, and yawn, and sneeze, all those things are good. Are you Tony? Yes, I am Jesus Christ. <laughs> Somebody removed the dildo from the audience. (laughs) Yes, just coincidentally, two of my favorite topics: uh, Jews and bondage. (laughs) 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 Yeah, nobody loves bondage more than the guy that got nailed to a cross. That's some extreme shit. (laughs) Fuck yeah, and that crown of thorns had to be a real doozy too, huh? (laughs) Yikes. (laughs) <laughs> Did we just jinx on yikes? Yeah, we jinxed. Wow. We jinxed. That crown of thorns is supposed to be a blindfold, but they just made it too small. Wait, what then? What? Yeah, I thought it was real. The crown of thorns is supposed to be a blindfold. Oh, it's more yeah. bondage stuff. Yeah. But it was too tight. Right. <laughs> anyway, I was uh, <laughs> So, Ori, uh, how much longer until you graduate? Yeah, about a year. About a year. You're going to have a degree in what from USC? Cognitive neuroscience. Oh my god. You can't even <laughs> say, you can't it. say it. can't say it. Cognitive neuroscience, right? Yeah, yeah. Cognitive neuroscience. Hey, they don't require me to pronounce my own uh, degree. Yes, it does! Yeah. 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 Why the fuck would I come to you? I remind everyone. <laughs> yeah. I went to college. Before they hand it to you, you have to say it once. So you never have to say it. Yeah, you could do it. It doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out how to say that. Anyway. Ori, very funny. I like your style, buddy. Keep rocking. Ori Amir, he's on Twitter. Ori Amir, that's Let's keep this fun train bumping along. Your next comedian goes by the name of, ooh, Skyler. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. 
expecting to get up tonight. All right. Well, Tony, you were you were talking about the Malaysian airliner that like disappeared. Yes, this is her segue into a jet. That's <laughs> <laughs> no. It, it's been really freaking me out lately. You know, it. Do you, there's like a group of magical terrorists out there. I mean, Al Qaeda's like training a group of people. No, that's not how you. That's not how you pull money out of hat. No. How are you going to make World Trade Center disappear again? Uh, I haven't really fleshed this out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I was going to go with uh, sawing a hundred, like, uh, virgins in half. <laughs> I think that's, that's where this joke was going to go, so. All right, thank you very much. Wow, okay. So, uh, at one point in the middle of that joke, you bailed out and started doing what we're supposed to be doing right now, and that's uh, trying to figure out what you could have done better. Um, My mother was a virgin. What was that, Jesus? My mother was a virgin. Ah, the first virgin. That's what we, that's what they say. Why you double lost me. I mean, you so lost me there. Yeah. I don't even know what. You, I feel like you were overcome with because you said it again. I didn't expect to get up here, and this is your and first I don't time. Know why? Here. Did somebody else sign your name up and put your name? Oh up no, no no no! It's just I've had, it's overwhelming. I've it's had a crappy overwhelming. The odds are like one out of thirty, one out of twenty-five or so probably. Yeah, it's not like it's going on. No, it's, it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the Powerball over here. No. no, no. <laughs> Wow, you, you, you came up like you just won the Oscar award for best picture. It's like, I was not expecting this. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Jesus. Oh, I'm on. Uh, all right. Uh, right here. You know what? I have great, I'm glad you brought that up because every time a black person wins an award, the first person they think is God. Yep. White people don't think God. Normally that award is Patty the Super Bowl, himself. But... <laughs> Wait, what? Matthew McConaughey thanked himself in the past. I love that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know what? With my inspiration, myself ten years ahead of me. I love that. Yeah, that was, like, that was thank God, I can't believe this. That was insane. Weird. Yeah, he was like the original Kanye with that shit. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey's great right now. He's, he, him and I are on a mission to bring Skinny back. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Should I do that again? Oh, I feel really good. I feel really good. Did I actually listen to all of that? Matthew and Kanye. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you about Every race has got one. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, about a year now. Okay. So, so seriously for a year or just off and on? No, no, seriously for a year. I've had a shitty, like, open mic week. All last week, I hit, like, four or five open mics and... Nothing. What's going on in your life? Oh. <laughs> uh, so that's why you have shitty open mics? <laughs> Maybe you should talk about your life on the mic. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking I'm about still running, No, guys. I haven't been able to get on. That's been my But point. I feel like you don't want to talk about that. You want to talk about your life a little bit, right? Well, yeah, I could. You know, yeah, you what the criminal did you just let off the hook in court today? <laughs> Like, what is your day life? Like, yeah. you're dressed in a very nice suit, very, very interesting, shirt. and I yeah. want to know you, and you're talking about something that you don't even want to talk about. Oh, oh, I'm a bouncer in a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we, we talked about this last time. Yeah. And, uh, Wait, yeah. does it say it on the vest? Is that right? That's yeah. how bouncers dress. Uh, they they there you go. Hey, I don't get you in trouble. Hey. Oh, I see. Well, I see what you did now. You threw the blazer over that to try to look all dapper. Right. There we go, yeah. This take is the classy blazer right here. The no question is, just, just take off the blazer, right? Or the, the vest. Just, if you're trying to hide the fact that you work at Deja Vu, or are you, are you not? No, not really. I just put on a blazer because it's cold outside. Okay. 
much. Right. Now, I love your demeanor. I want to see this in your act. Now, your demeanor is very low key. It's almost like Hannibal Burris. You live with your grandma, right? Oh man! Is that yeah. true? Yeah. You yeah. live with your grandma and you work at a strip club. Next time you come on the show, expect to get pulled out of the bucket and yeah. talk about one of those two things. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's it. so interesting. That's, that's amazing. It. Skyler, yeah, thank you, Skyler. Right. Yeah, we kind of need a joke to actually actually work. Yeah, yeah you know, it's like a, it's adorable though. We're gonna find out one day that his grandmother works at the strip club. <laughs> 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 it's a family business. Yeah. You bounce, I strip. <laughs> I sew the vest. <laughs> you better never take that off. <laughs> Oh, and the recent Kill Tony favorite, everybody. Put your hands together for the very funny Brett Banta. Hi my, name, hi, my name is Brett Banta. Have you ever tried to make a deal with God? Like, God, if you could just get me through this DUI checkpoint, you could take an inch off my dick. <laughs> That's why I had to stop drinking. I couldn't afford any more checkpoints. <laughs> you know you're ugly when you catch a hot chick picking her nose. She looks at you and keeps on picking. <laughs> Have you ever been picking your nose on the freeway and the car catches up to you so you speed up so you finish picking your nose? <laughs> then he speeds up, then you speed up, then he speeds up, then you speed up, then he turns on a siren. <laughs> I'm a bad father. I know because when I was driving my pregnant wife to the hospital, she screamed at me to run a red light. She's like, run it, run it, run it. She's like, no, it's illegal and dangerous. And I realized when I have to take a shit, or when every red light there is to get home. <laughs> so a human baby really is worth less than a good shit. Skyler didn't do up there. <laughs> That burger oh, joke awesome. was awesome. That was a great man. So I, think, I think you guys are going to get for him again. That was fantastic. I've never seen anybody say a joke in this show and watch all four of the people here immediately go into a pause for yeah. That's just a great, 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 great joke. Thank you. What do you know? It's uh, my first time ever meeting you. Uh, very funny. Uh, it's been on a few times, and okay. each time it's been a different minute, and each time it's... And how long has he been going up? Where is he from, and all that stuff? Hey, really, he's ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, you talk to the black guy a lot, but as soon as the white guy jumps in, you treat him like an object. <laughs> Yeah, what, I, agent? Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Dallas, Texas, and uh, yeah. Yeah. How, how long have you been out here? Uh, I've been out here 18 years, so oh. I can't remember for college in the state. And how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, stand up. Stand up a year and a half of going to open. Dude, place. man, yeah. you gotta go up a lot, everywhere and everywhere. Yeah. I will yeah. vouch it for you at places. Yeah, yeah you gotta. There's great. no doubt about that. Great eye for jokes. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 And they keep writing it, and like, this is ha this this is very exciting for me to see stuff like this. You know, right. you tell a good joke on something like this. A lot of people think we could very shit on it, but when someone's good, it's undeniable. Yeah, and you're good. It's a great show to kind of, I mean, it, yeah, it's an awesome show. Can I cut him down a little bit? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Got a little bit of a tweaker vibe. You got some drug problem going on? No, but I did get pulled over in Irvine with my wife, and the cops saw I was a tweaker, and I was it was early in the morning. And um, I mean, I'm definitely nervous being up here. Sure, so, sure. So to get I don't think tweaker like coke at yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how it feels. The nose, like. Okay. I understand it's, uh, it's the worst. Well, it's it's the greatest show. Johnny Carson had a nose thing, and because he did coke. Yeah. He said anything? No, no, no. But I understand the nerves thing. In a year and a half, then you got to expect that. Yeah. Uh, but also, you you are married, so that was true. Yeah. You don't have a ring? Yeah, I don't. I don't wear a ring. I'm going through stuff right now. Oh, oh, sorry. Right. oh it's all right. Was it, oh, she here? <laughs> <laughs> She's right there. I'm divorcing her right there. Uh, it's that guy in the green shirt. That's who we pointed at. She got me 
out of a POW camp. No, I'm kidding. That was an earlier callback. But that makes more sense to me. Well, wow. yeah. so I'm sorry about that marriage trial. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's okay. Um, that's how it is. So. This is your guy here. I mean, I think you build, this is a Tony, kill Tony, you know, superstar here. Absolutely. No doubt about it. I mean, this show definitely helps in the format of people that tell short jokes with a couple tags, and uh, he's right there. I mean, I don't even know how to tag some of that stuff. The last thing, I'll be honest, I started daydreaming at the end. Me too. <laughs> what was that exactly? Can you just repeat it so that I can get it again? Yeah, I was trying to do a callback to the nose picking, you know, you right, right, speed right. up, and yeah, then and I do the... DUI, right? Yeah, and then, yeah, and then I was like, I was trying to do the, um, I'm a bad father, um, I know because when I was driving my, my pregnant wife to the hospital, she screamed at me to run a red light, she's like, run it, run it, run it, and I was like, no, that's illegal and dangerous, but then I realized when I have to take a shit, I'll run every red light there is to get home, so a human baby really is worth less than a good... Shit. <laughs> so I, I ran out of time to keep it. Yeah. To say, so the next time you see a high speed police chase, uh, those aren't criminals. Those are people who are just picking their noses on their way home to take a shit. <laughs> but the kitty, I want to respect the kitty yeah. last time on that. Yeah. I actually gave you an extra nine seconds. Thank too, you. I appreciate it. <laughs> to hear the rest of it. Anyway, um, if somebody gave you a topic on something like news headlines and you were told to write for somebody else, would you be able to do that off of topics, or do you find it easier to write for yourself, or, or do you have the kind of brain that could just write all the time? I write, Tony's looking for writers. I write, every, I write every day just about going to Subway in my life, but I do try and work about, I try, I try and think about like topics like, you know, the flight. That would be a good exercise like to do that. That's very good. So, there, and Twitter has yeah, actually helped me. You guys helped me on. Uh, you guys really helped me on uh, after being here. I got like 50 followers instantly from something that uh, Brian did, so I appreciate it. And I'm trying to work on Twitter and start. I feel like you probably have a good eye for Twitter. I feel like you could have a good. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, sure. what's, your, what's your Twitter? Brett J. Banta. Yeah. Brett J. Banta. Brian T. B R E T J B A N T A. You're a monster, Brett. I don't know if I've really seen anybody that's that good at writing for themselves a year and a half into the game, and you've done it a few awesome. times, and it's just extremely impressive. Keep coming back okay, and yeah. stay Thank awesome. You very much. Some people are so good, but it's like... I don't even want to tag their stuff because it's like I. He, yeah, do you know why that on his like personal style? Right. But also like yeah, and I also don't know how to make it funnier. It seems like he's he's got so much control in the joke. It seems so great that I don't know if adding or taking away anything helps because it's stage so presence funny. for him. I think Absolutely. he just needs to work on stage. <laughs> yeah, I guess you want to be a writer. It's one of his tweets from six days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's still up in the air with that missing plane. <laughs> follow this man. He only has like four followers. followers. Only six people. You know, he's on the ground yeah. floor. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, this is a fucking future. Yeah. <laughs> Brett, you're a monster. Please keep coming back. Take care of those kids. Work it out with the misses. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away from the liquor. <laughs> sure. He doesn't drink anymore. Start smoking more weed. Yes. <laughs> Red band. <laughs> yeah, the ultimate inspiration. It means it it from the liquor, start shooting heroin, rob a bank. Good luck following this. Who is next? <laughs> Raul Santos. Oh, I find this so sad. <laughs> Firm of action worked. <laughs> yeah, so it's a big year for me. I'm turning 30, so I'm getting old. All my friends are getting married and moving into their parents' house. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm actually glad to be here. I live in a, in a bad neighborhood. The other day, I actually got stabbed trying to rob somebody. <laughs> I can't afford a security system, so all I do is just put police tape around my apartment. <laughs> And uh, my alarm clock is a rooster, but he's actually blind, so I'm always late everywhere. <laughs> uh, I went to public school, so I had to tutor my teachers. <laughs> and uh, for a field trip, we actually went to the field. Luckily, everybody was Latino, so uh, we got the work done pretty quick. 
<laughs> and the parents didn't have to leave their jobs to pick up their own kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I went to like a very non-athletic high school. Like none of us got recruited for any uh, basketball or sports. Uh, everybody just got recruited for the army or adult school. This is... Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Uh, the mic stand, you need to move that the other way. Because uh, when, you, when you start, you just kind of took it off and, you know, you had it in front of you. Or you could just oh. leave it in the mic stand and stand there and not even have yeah. to deal with it. Yeah. It seems like that. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. What is that? Where's that coming from? Yeah, dude, why don't you go laugh outside? I'm sick of hearing your oh, voice. Oh, St. Patrick's Day. I thought that was funny. Sure. It's not. It's not. Why don't you leave? Yeah, oh, yeah. Boy. yeah, get out. Josh, yeah. get out. You? Josh, get out. Yeah, get out. leave. Take me out. Yeah. Is that a guy? Yeah. I thought it was a cat. Goodbye. No, not oh, they're all with me. I don't know. I'm, I'm Wait, sorry. Sorry. Did that, that I'm guy so just sorry. Sorry. Like, is that like uh, I'm on a podcast recording? I'm going to do a fake yeah. laugh the whole time. Yeah. And then they're like, "Hey, yeah. that's my laugh." Oh yeah. Oh no, yeah. It's 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 unbearable. unbearable. Yeah. I thought it was somebody who was sincere. I'm a sucker. I thought it was like, God, it's that guy's man. Yeah. So the first couple of those laughs, I was like, yeah, but that last one, I was like, come on, man. Yeah, no, it's dumb. You know, he's just some tweaker that like, hangs out here. <laughs> he's Boone's boyfriend, right? Yeah, it's Boone's boyfriend. If you guys know who Boone is, it's Boone's boyfriend. Yeah, ah, well, all right. So, anyway, sorry for that to step right. That's Hollywood for you, buddy. <laughs> but you did a very good job. That field joke was hilarious. Uh, uh, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, for like probably like a year and a half, like a year and a half, maybe two. And you're, you live in LA. Yeah, from LA. Yeah, from the south. From the south. Uh, south Central LA. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, proper LA. Hang out there recently. Yeah, George H. Bush is from Crenshaw. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little tidbit for you. It's not even a George H. Bush, by the way. <laughs> George H. W. Bush. There you go. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> letter? I got one letter? I mean, yeah, that's not a human being. Is that <laughs> <laughs> there might actually be a George H. Bush from Crenshaw. Yeah, George, <laughs> George H. W. is definitely from Texas. There was, and we just kicked him out. <laughs> Ra Raul, right? Yeah. Are you, uh, what is your day to day life like? Because sometimes. I feel like people have these very self-deprecating jokes on them, and I was wondering, like, yeah, how close to the truth are we? And obviously they're jokes. I just wonder. I don't, I don't want you to depress the audience, you know. <laughs> I, uh, my my, uh, my thing is just uh, the stage presence. You know, you, you seem very uncomfortable the whole time, but you've only been doing it for a year and a half, so, you know, you're trying to get comfortable on it. And I don't know if you want to decide to leave the mic in the stage or hold the mic. You haven't even decided that part yet. I think you should leave it in. Because you're not moving anywhere. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> What's it like? Uh, do you still live in South Central? Yeah. What's it like? What, 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 what do you like about it? Nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you should talk about it, because you know I know I have a friend that lives there, and they that two people just got shot down the street from her house the other day, and it's just you know for her as, as a little girl that lives there, it's just like very scary for her, and to find it. Wait, you're friends with a little girl? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, talking about that, because you know, not not too many people know that room, and I barely know it. And just going there briefly, I was just amazed at the fact that she lived there, at, at least where she lives. And it, to be able to find maybe some funny shit out of that might be interesting. But I mean, you you did so well already. Like I, I really like your jokes, but it'd be just kind of cool to hear more about, like I think what Nick was saying, you know, your life. Yeah, and like just to distill a little more truth in it, because. They seem like such one-liners, and they are, and it's great, but just, I don't know, just somehow connect it to your reality a little more, I don't, and unfortunately I don't know exactly how to do that, like I don't know if I have an answer, but to say like, I live in South Central, I, I don't know. I, I mean, he already has the joke formula, he knows how to write a joke, but unfortunately the formula is just not, I'm not with it yet, you know, uh, he has to put his life within that system. That yeah, make has. it personal, yeah. versus like joke. Like, you already have, you know how to tell a joke. You did that, and you told several of them. That you wrote. But I, I didn't care about them. You didn't like the field too? I thought that was pretty funny. That was the only one. Yeah, that was the only one. That was, that was a little personal to him. You know, it, was, it taught me a little bit about him, but the other ones were like fluff, you know, like empty calories. But good, and the fact that you made that up is great. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's but yes, I know. <laughs> This is all of my guess we can't help you. 
They're all on mushrooms. <laughs> it's definitely a long run to be had about being a Latino growing up and living in South Central. There's a lot of things, a lot of fun combinations that you can make. Like maybe it's hard to do, it's hard to do a drive-by when 15 members of your family are in the car with you. <laughs> maybe that's the worst example. <laughs> Is it clown family? It's a Latina thing. You know the Latino thing? They all they pack 15 people in a car at a time. Uh, you know that universal stereotype? Yeah. <laughs> they do pack the cars. You heard about that? You heard about how Latino, the, the old joke about how Latinas take a family picture? No. They all sit in the front of the car and run a red light. Like <laughs> <laughs> an old street joke. A street joke? Yeah. <laughs> Um, where are you getting up right now? Are you getting up to uh, any local clubs that you go to for your mics? Yeah, I come here. I usually come here or I like, uh, I usually perform a lot at this ca uh, Formosa Cafe. Mm -hmm. I do all the shows there and uh, the Ice House. Ice House, yeah. I was going to say, I was recommend the Ice House because they have a new open mic there that, and uh, you know, for Latino comedy, it's Jesus and Jerry Ice House. house. Uh, that's where I, I perform a lot and it's a fun audience too. And you, you if you succeed, uh, you'll succeed there very easily if you keep it up, if you keep going there. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 So, rock and roll, Raul. We hope to see you back again soon. Thank you. 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 Night in armor type of night, not the dark time after the daytime. Is that a play on to like should night, but search night? I think night? so, search night. And if that wasn't enough for you, 29. <laughs> search night, 29, obviously search night 1 through 28 were taken. <laughs> when, I was in, when I was in Dallas, I, uh, I was with a bunch of friends, and my phone died, and I got back to my rental car. And I was like, see you later, friends. And I didn't remember the name of the hotel I was staying at, and I, and I didn't have a phone charger. And so I had no idea where I was in Dallas, what my hotel was, and I had no way to charge my phone. So I'm like, shit, I'm driving around looking for like a gas station. I couldn't find one. So I'm like, all right, I better get on the highway, find a gas station. So I get on just the first highway, find Get off the first exit. It was Martin Luther King Boulevard in Dallas. Yeah. Now, you know the old joke is like, Every time you see a Martin Luther King Boulevard, that's usually like the bad neighborhood. I grew up on the Martin Luther King Boulevard. Right. Actually, Martin Luther King. That theory is 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the second I got on the community. The second I got on the black gated community. <laughs> Tyler Perry was the headmaster. The, the second I got on the keep you guys from leaving. <laughs> The second I got off the exit, though, car on fire, two people running out of a, a gas station. Like, like I was going to go to this gas station, two people were running out the front door. Like, it was exactly what, what you think Mark Luther King Boulevard at 3 in the morning. What was on fire? Uh, this car was just on fire on the side of the road. There was just people laying on the side. Of, like, it was like every business was out of, like, like boarded up. It was just most. It was just exactly what you think Martin Luther King Boulevard would be. You know what I do like about Martin Luther King Boulevard, though, is uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, what do you like? Yeah. What? Oh, forget it. No, <laughs> no, no, you can't yeah, say it. You can't say it. You can't say it. Yeah, yeah. say it to Willie. Let Willie say it. It's <laughs> <Except> worse. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your phone charged, right, Ben? Yeah, I went to another exit. No, I went to yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The next comedian, the next comedian goes by the name of Sarah Candy. Yeah. I went off at Woody Harrelson Avenue on a great gas station. So I was driving behind this woman who had a baby on board sign in her back window, and then she stopped really suddenly. So I swerved not to hit her. And I accidentally ran over triplets. So that didn't work out all that well. So I've noticed lately that um, sometimes when I'm thinking things through in my head, I refer to myself as we. And I'm not sure if that makes me crazy or not. For instance, the other night I was thinking, I was writing this joke, and I thought, yeah, we could tell that on Monday. That would be a good idea. I was um, walking to this liquor store by my house, and there was a guy, this older guy with a guitar, 
and uh, he was just setting up. He was going to play some music on the street. And the first thing he did when he picked up his guitar was say, all right, one more time. And I thought, that's an interesting way to start a set. Like, what if I began my set with, do you guys get it? Yeah, we're probably not going to tell that one again. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Fuck yeah. I didn't get the first joke. It's like the triplets. Oh, um, just like baby on board sort of implies that, you know, there's valuable cargo, as though hitting anyone else is any better than not hitting a car with a baby in it. I don't know. I always think it's, I think it's odd to designate your car as having a baby on board because either way. Yes, you but so maybe go with that. And then I swerved to avoid a car that had a baby on board and then ran over an elderly couple that had been together for 87 years. Yeah, yeah. I Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were walking with the kids. I got the cure for cancer, right? It's true love. Like more of a contrast. Yeah. That would be good. So I would be more interested in, like, what, who left their triplets on the side of the road? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. What was the second joke? Um. Oh, we. We, we thinking of myself as we. That's just schizophrenia. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Not a little bit, definitely. That's literally the definition of it. Uh, maybe. Now I'm just I'm fucking shooting from the hip here, Sarah. <laughs> 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 I got the right joke. That is the sound effect for the joke of the night. Uh, uh, and I'm just, I, I talk about myself and we, and I don't know, apparently that's a sign of being crazy, but I don't think I'm crazy. Yes, I do. That's a, you know what I mean? Like maybe, it up a yeah, maybe. It's a little bit of like Eliza Schlesinger style. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Well, no, you don't, you don't want to do Eliza, but you want to find your own thing. But yeah, I agree that with makes them. sense. No, yeah. I totally, I totally agree with what you're going with. Yeah, that. yeah. So like, the, the, yeah. Uh, if you're going to take that approach and you're going to go, hey, I'm a little bit crazy, and then just be done with it after that, if you're going to say, I might be crazy, it's got to go crazy. Yeah, yeah. You, why? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can, and it could be a specific detail, like, well, my last two boyfriends don't think so, and they're in my backyard under age six feet. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> or it could be an act out that's a little crazy. <laughs> I gotta fucking write Daniel Tommy, man. I'm not just saying crazy stuff people would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, I was like, I'm not crazy, but I left a tape recorder in the bathroom. You know, like, I'm like, yeah. 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 yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that's crazy. Just so I can hear what they're talking about. Oh, All right. <laughs> Like something, something eccentric enough to where I'm like, I believe that you're crazy. You can't just, everyone's crazy. You could really let it rip. Yeah. Just have a total you can say, you can say the yourself. most dark thing yeah. from you one get, thing to. Yeah, I need to crazy it up. You can go like, you know, bobby, 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 and then I should probably be, ta I should probably take my medicine at the proper times. No, we shouldn't. And then like, you can go back <laughs> and forth. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 like, who, who's got time to, to medicate? Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I think we should. No, stop taking that medicine. <laughs> oh, that's a class to ask her. I, I don't know if you feel good with acting that out. Are you an acting out type person? Where, like, do you do improv or acting or anything like where you can like convey that message? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I could. Yeah, I think I could ham it up a little. I, I've done a little improv. I don't do acting. Ham it up? Well, I don't know. I, I think it's more because you're so dry. Dry the whole time. She's not dry. She's a very dirty girl. Whoa! Uh, oh my God! This is definitely the first female we've had on the show tonight. They've been trying to fucking awesome. Uh, but I think, like, because the way you said, "Am I crazy?" And I, yes, I am. We think we are crazy. Like, uh, it maybe just find a funny, like, quirky detail that. None of us would reckon to be like, uh, I say we, but uh, but I'm not crazy, and I know that because I've been institutionalized. It's like that's the driest, not funny version. Like that's. But what else would it be to get institutionalized? Like, but I know that because like I've only stabbed three male men or whatever. You know what I mean? And these are, again, pew pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I did, yeah, I did kind of 
forget the any because before I told him once before and I was like, yeah, we could tell that on Monday, but it's just me. Yeah, and I guess I, you know, maybe that helps a little. Cause, it makes, yeah, I don't get that. I don't either. But, <laughs> but I, I understand. Uh, I kind of see what she was trying to do. All right, then you. But then I would say something like, she said, she said, we can say this on Monday. And it's like, nah, it's just kind of me. But the problem is, it's only it's us. Just us it's just me. Somewhere. You know what I mean? Start playing with us. See, you're getting too know. much in your head. That's right. true. Yeah, yeah. If we got to walk it down, I need hardcore examples. Yeah, we got to walk down a little path hard. to get there. No, yeah, it could, you could crazy it up for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. no, you can crazy it up. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, oh, now she's we could crazy it Yeah, not me. Fuck, I'm not. All of us crazy. in here. Yeah. Also, same thing, Mike Sand, get it out of the way. Yeah. I know. I'm this mic stand thing. Anyway, just, we should have a mic stand yeah, sound. <laughs> just one of these. Yeah, let's let's, let's turn the new rule. If, the, if there's a, if there's a mic stand in front of you, we'll, and you don't, if, if you take the mic out of the stand, we're gonna have a sound it. effect that goes off you, right during your set. Do you have a sound effect of an arrow hitting a wooden target? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we <laughs> And also, listen to yourself. I mean, there's a PA system in here. Listen, you, you can hear yourself if you're not loud enough. Put the mic closer to your mouth. It's, it's not. A, put the mic closer. Some people, so many people talk like this. I can't hear anything. Just move it closer and talk into the microphone. You have a microphone. That's happened twice so far. Well, it's going to go the other way. I've gotten. Yeah, that sounds. That's good. Like a microphone stand. That's perfect. Sounds like a duck. Oh no! Next time I hear that. Yeah. So when you hear the the angry seal. Mike stand Sally. That's what we'll call it, seal. Yeah. Sally the. All right. The Mike stand. All right. Fuck yeah. Let's move along. Sarah Penny. Good job. Comedy. No underscore, just skinny comedy. Princess Kenny. Ah. Hey, is Josh around? I think he's getting us drinks. They made a, they made Kenny a chick lately oh. in South Park. Little Princess Kenny. I know. You play the stick of truth at all? No, the video game I heard is badass. It's just, so funny. I just can't get myself to hook up my Xbox again. Oh, hey, Josh. There he is. Josh, can we get around? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Rice. Jar. Fucking attitude of that guy. Honestly. He's like a ray of Water. sunshine. Water. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so this is the part of the show where we, we move along and do we do the uh, the two regular uh, girls on the show that do a brand new minute every week since its inception. So they're little monsters that we're building here. And uh, it's always fun. It's always a new, different minute. So let's do it again this week. Going first, put your hands together for her. You know her from Kill Tony and the Dysentery Podcast. It's Sarah Weinshank. <laughs> Trying to be more positive, guys. People keep telling me I'm always talking about what I don't like. I'm gonna talk about what I like. <laughs> I like playing with fire. <laughs> Specifically, burning bridges. <laughs> I like taking a full glass of water and drinking it till it's half empty. <laughs> I like it when life gives other people lemons. I like taking silver linings and painting them black. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. I like the grass on the other side. I, yeah, I didn't know what to do with that. I had that, but I didn't get to it, so I didn't know. Even when I said it, maybe it was a mistake. <laughs> no, I, I took that bullet from something there. I think, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, I think the grass is, oh, wait. My yeah. grass is greener. Yeah, it would be, the grass is always greener on my side. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's the opposite. Right? Or, but isn't that the thing? No, the thing is, the grass is always greener on the other side. And I hate So green. a pessimist would be like, I always like the other grass. I so the grass, 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 grass is always greener on the other side? No, my, my grass, grass is always greener. brown. Yeah. My neighbor's grass is greener. My neighbor lays soft. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe not my neighbor. <laughs> I hate the neighbors. I, I not bring the neighbor into it. The Astro, the the Astro turf is greener on the other side. We talked about you doing like a positive set, you know, last week. It was really interesting to see your take on a positive set. You really... Oh, I didn't know that inside. Well, that changes everything. Well, she was talking about how, you know, she always has a like kind of negative, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, outlook on life. Outlook on life. <laughs> And so it would be thought it would be interesting that she did like a positive, and you took it to a weird. This level. was a positive. This was a positive. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love the. I love the physical. Uh, what was the word to use here? Clever. They're like, oh, I'll give you a positive set, but it's still negative. Yeah, uh, which is funny. It's it's still funny. Negative. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It was like I like negative things, which is very yeah. cool. Which means I like the grass on the other side. I still stand fucking behind that. <laughs> Did you realize you were still kind of making it negative while you're making it positive, or do you think that's positive and you're broken? <laughs> I knew that I was making it negative. Good. Yeah. So you knew what you were doing. Perfect. Well, yeah, yeah. Do you always root for the bad guys in movies? <laughs> no. I'm just like kind of indifferent. <laughs> well, well, I think uh, <laughs> I like Ursula. <laughs> I like that's the only movie villain I can think of. <laughs> you? The, the, the bad guy from Twin Peaks? No, <laughs> uh, <Ursula. laughs> Little Mermaid. From Little Mermaid. Oh, <laughs> the original. But I think they probably movie. came out in the same year. <laughs> Twin Peaks and the Lower Earth. I would almost bet. Man, that's a big one in your bet. life right there. You got to really get through it. <laughs> what's, 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 that's when I stopped developing. <laughs> Such an interesting uh, yeah. thing that we need to play with. That that whole positive yeah, like, negative is just so it's fun. really funny. Yeah. yeah. And I like the. Uh, I, I like that a lot. I feel like Tony. I can't believe you're not spouting these out right now. No, I know. It's just a little bit hard for me to think of positive things when you're in love, <laughs> because you have to think of the positive thing first and then flip it. You know. So it's, I was thinking maybe there's something like, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe in the stop. power of the secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where you. And then yeah. and do the opposite. Right. Can I go stop and smell the flowers. I like to. Correct me if I'm wrong. It would be I like to run past the smell of the flowers. Or am I completely wrong? You're completely wrong. On that, right? Stop and smell the flowers. <laughs> well, can you say two of your run and ignore the flowers? I like to I like to burn bridges. What you said. I like to stop and smell the flowers, but I smell them by picking them out of the ground first, so that they could die a slow death in the next few days. <laughs> <laughs> I stop and smell the flowers at a cemetery. Right. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty good. I like to stop stop and smell the flowers at other people's graves. <laughs> Yeah, we're together. <laughs> that is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the smell of fake flowers. <laughs> 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 you fucking nailed it, man. Fake flowers. Come on, give me something there. <laughs> I like finding lucky pennies in your room. No. No. Because that's too nice. Like you're leaning on somebody. What are those things called? What are, they, what are these little sayings called? Are, uh, they're, they're wine chanks. Wine chanks. <laughs> they call wine chanks. It's like it's like the opposite of what Ben Franklin tells us. You give us your version of it. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah it's like very, it. very funny. I really enjoy it. I don't, I don't, I don't step on cracks, but I, you know, you guys know where this is going. I, I, I don't even like it. Not great mothers about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Will. Uh, we, we had our one hit. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so happy. Up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy that I started my period, not because I'm not pregnant, because I like the smell. Oh, oh, that's that's so that's nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 Sarah Wine Shank. She's on Twitter at Princess Shank. That's S H E N K. Princess Shank. Man, I love that. I love that. I love it. It's another great one. She's adding on to it. It's so awesome. You know, when we saw them in La Jolla a couple weeks ago doing longer sets, they were they were killing, and I could totally see how that minute could rotate right into right. everything else that she's doing and give it a fresh breath of perspective mixed in with all the other stuff that she, I mean, she's just talking about hating everything which she's really good at and uh and we have, you seem a little nervous what i don't know you seem like you're really into this girl 
Well, I am. I so these are the two regulars on the show. No, I know. It just seemed like you got a little, like, schoolboyish. <laughs> I'm very schoolboyish when it comes to these two. I am too. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I'm very invested I'm, in their careers. It's a great assessment. Of if, they, if they end up turning into heroin-addicted hookers, I'm an asshole. Yeah. And I'll be happy as fuck! <laughs> Good co- it's bad cop, worst cop, me and Brian Ruff. How are you doing, Jesus? Are you doing good over there? Perfect. I'm fucking right. Put your hands together for our final regular, your final comedian tonight. Regular since the beginning of her comedy career, which started here on Phil Tony. It's Kimberly Condon. Hey guys, my name's uh, Kimberly. My friends call me Kim. Uh, my dad calls me like twice a year. <laughs> you know? I, uh, I'm a comedian. It's kind of hard being a female comedian, you know, because I feel like people don't take me seriously, you know? I'm more than just a pretty face. I've also got a rocking hot body. I'm from, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from Florida. Uh, I lived there my whole life. Believe it, believe it or not, I've never even killed a black guy. Uh, but I have killed a black erection. <laughs> yeah, my dad was really mad, and I was like, listen, I was just standing my ground, and besides, you were a deadbeat like five jokes ago. Well, thank you very much. You've all been decent. That's a very, very, uh, it's a very smart callback that you just did, but it's not that funny. <laughs> it was like three jokes ago, I think. Very smart, right. Yeah. No, it was actually Four? really, really smart. The, yeah. the, end, the number of jokes has nothing to do with it. However, <laughs> 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 it was three, four, or five. But super smart, but that's one of the things which I always have a problem with because I'm a fucking genius, is sometimes it's smart, but it's not funny. Hey, Lily, you want to get out of here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, but let's talk about that other stuff. That he calls me twice is awesome. Right, that's very fantastic. Funny. And there's more to be said with that. And you could stay right in the pocket with that stuff. Yeah. Maybe. Since you talk about your mom, which we've heard a lot about mm-hmm. in the, the many episodes that you've done, um, you know, that's really something that we don't hear a lot from. And I'm guessing. But I've heard that joke before, right? You've done this joke. I've done it on my set, like oh, you've seen it on my sets, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. oh. I did it in one way. The, but you haven't done it on the whole time. What is the next step of that? I my dad only calls me twice a year. Now I know you're thinking. Or, or don't worry, he only wants money. I don't know, like some like go into the darkness of that. Yeah. Well, I kind of talk about my dad a little bit, like uh, beating my mom and some of my sets. I think it's like on Kill Tony. <laughs> so, like, funny stuff. Oh, I had a weird childhood because he wouldn't let me watch rated R movies, but he hit my mom in front of me. Oh, I like that. They were too violent. <laughs> <laughs> the rocking hot, hot bod part, is that something she should do, or is that something, because it's self, yeah. it's kind of like a... Is it too conceited yeah. with a uh, Toy Story show? I mean, don't get me wrong, sis, you got a rocking hot bod. I know. <laughs> you definitely didn't commit to it. What made it yeah, funny... Yeah, that was what like, made it funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is that you didn't co- that I commit I didn't. to it, and you <laughs> sort of broke afterwards, and so it made it all right, but... There's two ways of doing that. Either you don't do it at all, or you do it and the opposite. You, you really fucking have to sell it. Show some push, maybe? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, however, push is back. No, I, I think the I almost think the opposite. Like you don't do it at all, or you have to have the literally the worst body in the world in order to like make that a funny joke. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. It's also got to be more coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you'd also have to have more. Eyes. Plus, then we're now we're just all checking out your body. We, when, right when he said that, I just started looking at your crotch and your tits. Oh. Well, I was supposed to go right into my flaws after that, but I forgot. I have some. Too. <laughs> Tell us about him. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I mean, stinky butt. Stinky butt. Stinky butt. Stinky butt. Who stinky doesn't butt. have a stinky butt? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was the only thing that stuck out for me was the rock and hot vibe thing. Although, you know what? It was so incredibly charming when you laughed at yourself that I immediately was like, oh, what else can I say? I guess that is so your find a moment is you can do it exactly the way that you did it yeah. you know, this yeah. time. But that's and play really off the response. Know. And play off the response because uh, cause once you said that, it was such dead air. <laughs> I, mean, not, I don't know if people just disagree with you or they just thought, like, wow, she's really over her head. Uh, I mean, ask the audience. They didn't have a 
a response this at all. This is bullshit. What happened? I keep playing it off. At, uh, I mean, what did you expect me to do? I don't know. Yes, you do. I was trying to get a pause break after that one. Really? No. But let's say, let's go both ways. Let's say you are literally like Barbie body, just like, just picturesque body, like, are cartoonishly, like, what we are told is a hot body. If you said that joke, and if Jessica Rabbit, everyone would be like, fuck this fucking yeah, cunt. Be more annoying. And if you were obese, we'd be like, oh, now she's making fun of herself. So if you're not either of those, you really can't, like, say that. Or you could say that you have a hot body because you have a flu and your temperature is, like, 100 yes. degrees. Yes. Or you can twist it at the end. Okay. I got a hot body. I have walking in my Rocking hot body. <laughs> <laughs> walking in my Because, because I, I've been... I, I'm a mule for Harold. Like you can see, like, in one of the bubbles, bro. Kimberly, thank you so much. Thank Another great, you. great new dance from the Wranglers. So much fun with everybody we saw tonight: Sarah Kenny, Ross Santos, Brett Danta, Orion Mir, Skylar, and of course, Bugzilla. <laughs> uh, you got the hair too. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ, everybody. Yeah. We used to live across the street from each other. That's Kevin Lee Light, L-I-G-H-T, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This is Nick Rutherford. He's on Twitter. He's probably got something coming up. At Nick Rutherford. Check it out. You can also check out uh, me, Nick, and Jade. Oh, yeah. Reddit, check out uh, the podcast. podcast. On Dust Squad. It's, uh, it's podcast where we just smoke a bunch of weed and do improv shit. Willie Hunter's on Twitter, and he has his own big show coming up. Tell us yeah, about at, it. Uh, at Will Hunter Show, and uh, the Willie Hunter Show will be back from a year yes. from hiatus. Yeah. Yes, Ian Edwards. Wow. Yeah. 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 The Patriot last week, Earl killed it. Uh, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, we're coming. The Cat Pack is back the 18th and 19th and the 20th of April. Yep, and the big 420 show at Vancouver is at, uh, at, at Casino. It's going to be big. Go to Death Squad TV for sure. Thank you, live audience, for coming out tonight. So much fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah